Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the series, Upload, released in the year 2020. The series is set in a dystopian future where the entire world has become digitized. While there are many inventions that would seem like that from a video game, the most bizarre of them all is the virtual afterlife. It's a place where the rich and affluent people can live after their deaths and enjoy all the luxuries that they couldn't when they were alive. The process for entering such a world is simple. After a person dies, his memory and consciousness is uploaded into an afterlife of his choice. The richer the person, the better afterlife options he can choose from. In this way, one can live forever, as long as his family keeps paying the bills. Moreover, the person can also communicate with his family and friends, and can even meet them once they die and are transported to the afterlife. This rigorous process of joining the digital heaven is called upload. Surprisingly, instead of the government, it's managed by a large private conglomerate, which has thousands of employees who act as the afterlife's customer service. Among these employees is a 25-year-old girl named Nora. Her work comprises of guiding new clients to the afterlife and helping them adjust to the new environment. She uses a futuristic app to communicate with them and can even meet them using her virtual self. Despite working for the largest organization in the world, Nora hates her job. Nevertheless, she still continues, hoping that she'll get an afterlife discount once she dies. Following this, we're introduced to Nathan, an inspiring engineer who has a knack for developing new applications. He's driving his futuristic car, which can drive automatically and has all the safety precautions installed in it. A while later, Nathan gets tired of the traffic and decides to drive himself. He then plugs an illegal device into the car and drives it using a controller. Unfortunately, a police drone spots the overspeeding car and quickly chases after it. But being the smart guy that he is, Nathan makes up a clever excuse and digs himself out of the trouble. When he reaches home, he joins his family and his wealthy girlfriend, Ingrid. Here, we get to know that Nathan is not in love with her because of her obsession with money and fame. She is also overprotective and clingy, which is the exact opposite of Nathan's nature. Later, as Nathan dances with his niece, Ingrid becomes jealous and interrupts them. She then persuades him into making love with her, which they do in the back seat of his car. In the next scene, Nathan heads to a digitized grocery store and buys a few items. On the way back, his car strangely malfunctions and crashes at full speed against a truck. This leaves Nathan with serious injuries, but he's still alive. Wasting no time, he's rushed to the hospital, where the doctors inform him that his injuries are so grave that he can either be uploaded or left to die naturally. Just then, Ingrid approaches him with a contract for his upload, and in a state of panic, Nathan signs it, hence registering himself to the afterworld. Soon, he's taken to an isolated room and placed on a chair. Nathan thinks that he's going to be treated, but to his horror, he is decapitated. Right after, he wakes up in the afterlife, and the first thing he hears is Nora's voice. She asks him a series of questions to ensure his senses are working fine. She also creates a virtual avatar for him, which includes an unusual hairstyle. In the next scene, Nathan finally wakes up from his delusion and finds himself in a luxurious room. Nora explains that the room is called Lakeview Afterlife, one of the most expensive packages their company offers. She also explains that everything in the package is designed to suit his interests. For instance, there's a bowling alley near the building, but for other customers, it might be a basketball court. Furthermore, Nathan can also make new friends inside the afterlife. All this information becomes too much for Nathan to process, and he starts crying. Seeing this, Nora calms him down, mentioning that he'll get used to the changes soon. She then convinces him to sleep and continues her work with another client. The following morning, when Nathan heads to the kitchen to grab some food, he finds out that in-app purchases require money. However, he cannot pay through his own bank account as his plan is sponsored by Ingrid's family. This is when it dawns on Nathan that Ingrid controls his life now and can even delete him if she wants to. Later, a depressed Nathan heads to his balcony and gazes at the beautiful lake nearby. He then snoops around a bit and finds out that he can even change the seasons with a remote control. Following this, he bumps into Ingrid's grandmother, who also happens to be using the same package. Surprisingly, she is black and white as the reference for her avatar was taken from a very old picture. 
After this, he calls his girlfriend through a digital smartphone and learns that she's enjoying a party. This surprises Nathan as he guessed that she would still be mourning his death. After a short conversation, Ingrid hangs up the call, but not before mentioning that now Nathan cannot run away from her. Elsewhere, Nora is having dinner with her father, who seems to have a serious health condition. With death imminent, Nora plans to save money for his upload program, but the latter rejects the idea, claiming that he wants to meet his wife in the real heaven. Back in the afterlife, Nathan meets a guy named Luke, who's also searching for breakfast. He introduces himself and then talks about a strange form of current called the torrent. It's a gateway between the afterlife and the real world, but passing through it is extremely dangerous. Most people who cannot get used to the virtual world end their lives by jumping into it. With days passing by, Nathan starts getting paranoid due to the sudden changes. Everywhere he goes, the staff address him as Mr. Brown, and his hair is too pointy for his liking. Moreover, there are several glitches in the afterlife, which causes him to slowly lose his sanity. Fed up with everything around him, Nathan decides to end his life. He heads to the torrent to initiate his plan, but fortunately, Nora stops him. She requests him to give it a few days, and after a lot of convincing, Nathan finally agrees. Before leaving, she even tells him her real name as a show of trust. A while later, Nora gets off work. While she's not around, her computer mysteriously deletes files from Nathan's memory on its own. The next day, Nathan is sent to pet therapy because of his actions from yesterday. He's handed a golden retriever, but surprisingly, the dog can talk. Turns out that a therapist from the real world is controlling the dog, as it's the only way to convey his message and make Nathan feel better. Before the session ends, the therapist gives Nathan an assignment, where he has to write the names of five people he meets today. Elsewhere, Nora approaches her boss with some paperwork, which states that her father is entitled to the upload discount. However, the boss denies the discount, mentioning that it's only applicable for the employees who have at least a 4.6 rating on their profile. Nora has a 4.59 rating, and despite the difference being negligible, the greedy boss doesn't care. Back in the virtual world, Nathan gets to know that it's his funeral today. He calls Ingrid to know about the preparations, but to his surprise, she's at a spa getting stem cell injections. Annoyed by what he just saw, Nathan quickly hangs up and starts looking for new friends to complete his assignment. He meets a kid named Dylan, who died at a tender age of 12, and has been in the afterlife since then. Nathan tries to initiate a conversation, but the kid is too busy fighting virtual bad guys. Later, he meets a man named David Choke, who turns out to be a billionaire. David is enjoying a lavish afterlife, where he's making up for the time he lost in the real world. As the two continue talking, David inquires as to what Nathan did for a living. In reply, Nathan reveals that he, along with his friend Jamie, were developing an app that would allow people to create their own afterlife, where they could spend time with their families. In this way, one doesn't have to pay millions to enjoy the virtual world. Hearing this, David jokingly says that Nathan was murdered by the company's owners, since he was going to make them go bankrupt. The theory intrigues Nathan, but he decides to ignore it and walk away. Elsewhere on Earth, Nathan's family hires a detective named Fran to investigate his death. Wasting no time, she immediately looks for his car and finds it in a junkyard. Surprisingly, the car is still working, but it refuses to admit that it's been damaged. This implies that someone tampered with the car. Meanwhile, Nora and Nathan are having a walk, where the latter mentions that he's been having memory problems as of late. For instance, he cannot remember the app he was developing. Hearing this, Nora recalls the incident where she found a large number of files missing from his memory. She then promises to look into it, but gets busy with other clients. She tries her best to convince them to rate her with five stars, but each of them do the opposite. Seeing this, Nathan approaches her and gives her several five stars. Because of the selfless act, Nora opens up with Nathan and reveals her entire situation to him. Eventually, the two start liking each other. Upon reaching home, Nora looks for the missing data from Nathan's memory. She cannot find them but is able to get her hands on the memories that come right after the deleted parts. There, Nathan and his friend Jamie have just come out of a business meeting. Soon, a man approaches them and asks if they have shared the idea with any big companies. Nathan replies that no one except his family and girlfriend knows about it. Nora finds the entire conversation strange, 
so she decides to investigate it later. In the next scene, several news channels are announcing the trial of a groundbreaking invention. If successful, the scientist can bring a person from the afterlife into the real world. This process is called download, and the first experiment is going to be broadcasted globally. Meanwhile, Nathan is getting ready for his own funeral. Ingrid is in charge of the whole event, and she even chooses Nathan's outfits. After getting dressed up, Nathan also finds out about the download experiment and gets excited, hoping that one day he can get back to the real world. Soon, the experiment begins, and for a while, things go according to plan. However, the whole plan goes south when the subject's head explodes. This shocks everyone, including Nathan, but he's still hopeful that one day he will return home. In the next scene, the funeral commences in the real world, as well as the virtual. However, Nathan is taken aback to find that the funeral is actually a party, and none of the people have come there to express their condolences. Instead, they've come to watch a game and socialize among themselves. Even his mother approaches him and informs him that the money they got from his company's share was not much. Nathan is devastated by all this, but he's further saddened that his best friend, Jamie, is absent. Later, an enraged Nathan confronts Ingrid for her stupid planning, but the latter threatens to delete him if he does not behave. Left with no choice, Nathan reluctantly apologizes and walks away. Nora is watching all of this take place and feels bad for him. Meanwhile, Detective Fran also arrives at the funeral and approaches Nathan. She asks him if he had any enemies, to which the latter says no. Following this, she reveals that after he arrived at the hospital, his vitals were improving, and he could have easily been treated. Elsewhere, Nora returns home and calls the guy she saw in Nathan's memory. The guy introduces himself as Josh, but refused to divulge any more information about the meeting, claiming it to be confidential. Back in the afterlife, Nathan calls his best friend Jamie, but as always, the latter doesn't pick up. The episode ends as Nathan finally feels something fishy going on around him. That was all from the video, I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.